Hello and welcome back to the third round of the 1998 Formula One World Championship. We are here at the Interlago circuit. It's in the middle of Sao Paulo and it's one of the most iconic tracks in Formula One history. Intermittent weather and great overtaking opportunities makes this a fan favorite track. But who's going to come out on top this race weekend? Well, Schumacher seems to be the favorite. He took pole position ahead of his Ferrari teammate. And then it's the two McLarens starting behind them. Coulthard and Hakkinen, followed by Alessi and Hill down in P6. Then it's Herbert, Ralph Schumacher, Giancarlo Vizicella, and Rubens Barrichello rounding out the top 10. Both the Williams made a mistake that promotes Wirtz ahead of Frensen, and then Magnussen ahead of Salo, Villeneuve down to 15th, just ahead of Gecki, Nakano, and Verstappen. Finally behind them, it's De La Rosa and Ricardo Rosset, rounding out the bottom half of our grid. The drivers are just finishing up the formation lap now, and for the first time this season, it's the Ferraris locking out the front of the grid. Schumacher finds that pole position spot, and we wait for those five red lights. And it's go, go, go. Good reactions from both prancing horses, but Irvine's is just that little bit better. He edges out Schumacher in the second half of the starting procedure as Alacy promotes himself up into fourth. It's a bad start for Hakkinen, who's under pressure from the Jordan behind already. The driver's all scrapping side by side in this first complex of corners, just trying to find enough grid space to hold on. I think everyone's just about unscathed so far. 36 laps of racing left. Anything could happen. The Williams, they're getting quite feisty in the background. They go three wide at the corner, trying to edge themselves past the arrows there. Looks like that's Fredson around the outside. He promotes himself past the arrows. Wildenhoff not so lucky. It's been a bad qualifying for both Williams, but we know the car performance is there this race weekend. Villeneuve taking that inside line and pushing the black arrows all the way out wide. That's going to give him another position as there's a little bit of scrapping in the background as well. I believe that's Gecki battling side by side with one of the Tyrrells there. Holding around the outside line there. There's just about enough grip. Just enough to hang a car in there. And the driver's all just settling down at the end of this first lap. And it's Irvine who's leading the pack now. The driver's settling in just a little bit for the full race ahead. We see some scraps, a little bit of battle side by side, particularly with these two, the two Williams teammates. They have the pace to make their way up the grid, but they have to get their heads down and focus on the bigger picture ahead. It's Villeneuve, of course, who wants to promote himself past his teammate Frensen. Villeneuve, the defending world champion this year, but it's not been the start of the season he would have wanted. A few down the pack finishes, mostly through no fault of his own, just hasn't been a very lucky season so far for Williams. Battling around the outside of his teammate now. Outside becomes inside for this complex of corners. Looked like the door had just shut there for a moment, but Villeneuve stuck his nose back in and forced that door back open. It's Irvine who leads the race from his teammate onto the third lap of the Grand Prix. And it's Lacey just getting out of shape there. He's a little out of position. That Sauber is a, quite a fair bit slower than the McLaren of this season. But he's holding on well at this stage of the race. Taking a look back to our podium finishes now, it's Coulthard putting the Ferrari under pressure. If ever you wanted to see the pace of that McLaren that Hakkinen is struggling to utilize, well, here's Coulthard putting pressure on our two race leaders further up the pack. Side by side, then Hakkinen trying to promote himself past the Sauber at this phase of the race. Of course, Hakkinen was the race winner of Mexico, our previous race of the season, and finished second in Australia. So he's one of our championship contenders. He's a little out of position from where he wants to be further up the grid. And that's Gecki and Magnussen battling side by side in the first complex of corners as well. They've got the faster Williams behind them for company, but they're not going to be looking in their mirrors very much right now. They're focused on one another. This is Gecki's highest running position in a Grand Prix so far. He's battling for 12th along with the Stewart there. One of the Williams getting a little opportunistic, and I think there's a bit of contact. Villeneuve just hit the rear wheel of Magnussen there. I think they both just about got away with that. Villeneuve getting frustrated though, that Williams package is fast, he was 5th in free practice. If it's just that issue in qualifying that demoted him so far down the order, he's done well to move through the pack in this opening phase of the race, but he knows ultimately that Williams has more pace. Here we have then the teammate battle underway between the two prancing horses. Schumacher dives up the inside early. They're battling wheel to wheel. Two teammates, two championship contenders side by side here at Interlagos. And it's Schumacher who makes his way ahead. Irvine is forced to concede that position. I guarantee you it's not willingly, but he doesn't have the pace to match at this phase of the race. And it's Magnuson then. 
Villeneuve trying to promote himself past the slower Stewart cart there. He takes that outside line. Like we said earlier, there's enough camber to make a move stick there. Villeneuve looking to prove that point. Outside becoming inside once more, side by side, and that Williams just has the horsepower advantage. Not much Magnuson can do to stop that overtake from happening at this phase. But there is something Gecky can do, and that's to use this to his advantage. Looking at the outside there, oh, there's just not enough grip on these groove tires to make a move like that work. But it was fair play to Gecky. That was an opportunistic look there. Can Hakkinen have one of those here further up the grid? That's the question we've all been wondering. Alacy shuts that door, and Hakkinen is a very cerebral driver. We know he's not going to go for any bad overtake moves at this phase of the race. He's got a championship picture to worry about. He's happy to hang out and forth. But for how much longer, no one can really say. He's going to want to be battling for that podium position. Alacy is over a second a lap slower than Hakkinen's teammate Coltard. It's around about a 17 second gap to the podium positions for Hakkinen now. He's going to be wanting to get past that Sauber sooner rather than later. It is starting to have a dent on his race. And that's Herbert there. He's just lost grip, trying to put some power down to those wheels. Just losing some grip, trying to put the power down onto that long straight. It looked for a moment like he was trying to retire the car. I think he's managed to keep it running, but just barely. There's not enough of a gap for him to rejoin the race. In fact, I'd say this is borderline dangerous. There's faster cars approaching through that section, but it looks like he's just about kept it running. Coltart then putting pressure on Irvine, trying to promote himself up in a second. They are side by side in the corner. Irvine's going to push him wide here. We're going to see it. Coltart just can't hang on, but he manages to find that second wind. It looked like the move was off for a moment, but Coltart just found a little bit of more grip and power. Ultimately, it wasn't enough to promote him past the Ferrari, but that was impressive maneuvering from the Scotsman. Into the first rounds of pit stop then. It's Irvine pitting ahead of Coltard. We saw him under pressure from the McLaren driver. This is going to be an, under, an attempt to undercut that team, get onto a fresh set of tires, and bang out a faster lap time than what Coltard's capable of when he comes in for his own pit stop later in the race. We're seeing that now. Unfortunately, it seems like Irvine was held up by Wurtz sometime during his outlap. Coltard has the potential to come out in front of Irvine depending on McLaren's ability to capitalize on the situation. So we're just going to be watching that back half of the track now, looking for the other Ferrari. Not the one in your picture now, that's Schumacher. He's our race leader. We're looking for Irvine. He's going to be a little further back, so let's just watch the active racetrack on the left-hand side of your picture now. Coming through the curve. Schumacher is going to retake the lead of this race here. That's almost certain. I just saw a flash of red in the background. It's going to be close between the two, but Coltard just manages to edge out Irvine. They're both held up behind Wurtz, though. He is holding up the pack in Australia with a late pit stop in the opening round of the season. It looks like he's employing the same strategy here in Brazil as well, and you just see how effective it is. In Australia, that netted him a points-paying finish. It very well could do the same here in Brazil, but that's very frustrating for the two championship contenders directly behind him. They are going to be held up through this series of twisting corners. Let's see Coltar trying to change his luck here. He goes around the outside there. They are battling wheel to wheel. Wurtz is not, he's not happy to concede that position. He does lose out in the end, but he's going to hang a tight in that slipstream with the McLaren ahead of him. He's under pressure from Irvine behind. You see that little bit of wriggle onto the straight, trying to keep the Ferrari behind, trying to keep the car of Irvine guessing as to what's happening. Looking further back behind the pack, it's Hill and Fisichella. This is a battle for net sixth position, taking into account the pit stop strategy. They're just piling on to this lap. Ultimately, though, it's Michael Schumacher who's indomitable at this stage. Eight seconds ahead of Coulthard in second, and setting the faster lap times of anyone of this Grand Prix so far. And that's a car stopped in the first complex of corners. Magnuson there. That is going to bring out the safety car. Look at the right-hand side of your picture there. This is going to back the pack up into the dying stages of this race. This could get spicy indeed. We've got the replay on board with Gecky in the minority. He just looks up the inside there, and oh, there's a lockup, and he spins the steward around. Ah, uh, that's a rough move there. Have to say... Stewards are probably going to look pretty harshly on that one. The move was on, but ultimately it was up to Gecky for failing to make that maneuver stick. And Magnuson, through no fault of his own, is taken out of the race. You just see that lock up there. 
And at that stage, the minority's out of control. There's nothing he can do to avoid Magnuson, who is an innocent victim, a passenger in this collision. Taking a look from that aerial view, again, the move was on in theory. There was a little bit of an opening into that first corner, but he couldn't make it stick. That's going to back the pack up. We are going back to green flags. Is Schumacher going to be under pressure for this race restart? We'll just have to see. It looks like he's got a pretty good getaway so far. Only four laps of race remaining here. Colts are trying to promote himself a little off the pack as well. I think we've got some lap cars in the way here. Oh, a little out of phase. That puts the stop on Irvine. He just has to pump the brakes as the arrows ahead gets unsettled. Indeed, you see them peeling off to the side of the track there. Hacken has lost two places. <laughs> Pedro de la Rosa is lapped, but is preventing Hackman from moving any further up the pack. Alessi, who overtook their pit stop position, is a friend of Hackman. So is Hill. Again, this is just not the race he's needed. He's had the pace all race weekend, but he's just been falling through the pack on these start procedures. We saw it happen at the start as he got overtaken by Alessi. We see it again now as he's overtaken by Alessi and Hill in tandem. Riding on board with the other Stewart, still in this race trying to make the most of it in these dying stages and you see all these cars getting confused in the lapping procedures that's quite scrambling the pack in the dying phases of this race Hakkinen and Hill Hakkinen looking to promote himself back up in a fifth it's going to be easy pickings to get past the Jordan surely Hakkinen has the downforce and the horsepower advantage with only three laps of race to go he needs to be making these inroads fast though he doesn't have much more time to plan these out Villeneuve, who started P15, has made the most of this phase. He's up to P9 now, and is looking to get even further than that. This race is played beautifully into the defending world champion's hands. Barrichello there is under a little bit of pressure. Two laps remaining. It's anyone's race at this phase. Alessi, though, he's had a fantastic start. Through thick and thin, he's held on to everything. P4 for him. Schumacher's last corner here. He's going to win his first Grand Prix of the season. It's Michael Schumacher winning the Brazilian Grand Prix for Ferrari. Behind him, it's Coulthard. It's been a dominant performance from the German. He seemed untouchable. He lost position to Irvine. It didn't matter in the end. He had the race pace to make that win work. Despite everything thrown at him this weekend, it's been a dominant win for Michael Schumacher. So with that race result then, Coulthard holds the lead of the championship standings, and Schumacher pushes himself past Hakkinen. Stewart can be quite happy. Both of their drivers have points on the board after only the third race this year. Hill and Lacey then, they've built up pretty good leads to their teammates. They're both still ahead of the Williams as well. Now, Williams seems to have pretty good car performance, but neither of their drivers have had the race results to match it this season. Someone else who struggled has been Eddie Irvine. He finally scores a podium this race after mistakes in the opening two rounds took him out of contention. That's all for tonight. I hope you join us in the next round of Formula One action. <laughs>